First, uh, Louisiana Lafayette, uh, I got a lot of respect for their head coach, uh, Mark Husband, who I had gone against years in the past, whether it was in North Alabama in the Division II ranks. He did a great job there, but also at Mississippi State. Um, and I know a lot of coaches on the staff. I've coached with those, some of those guys before. Um, they do a really good job of spreading the ball out. They've got an experienced quarterback um, and a good young defense that's improved a lot throughout the year. But uh, they got a good football team. And uh, they'll come in here ready to play, and we got to get ready for them. Kirby, uh, just asking if there's an update on Isaiah Wynn. And also, how did Dyshawn Sims hold up, you know, over through the second half, uh, you know, playing in the league? Well, the good thing is Dyshawn had played quite a bit, you know, throughout the year. So you had a guy you could put in there with um, some experience. That puts, that puts us one injury away from somebody playing that hasn't played much. Um, so, uh, but I thought Dashaun did a good job coming in, competing, especially for the guy that he was blocking. You know, the talent level was really high, that, that interior positions. Um, so he did a nice job. As far as Isaiah, we think he'll be okay. He's got MCL, slice brain, should be able to do some things today. And uh, we think we'll get back to this game. Kirby, at the start of the Auburn game, you had a couple of big get, uh, plays in the passing game. I know one got called back, but can you just talk about what has Jacob done to kind of improve his touch on deep throws throughout the last several weeks? And I guess as a second part, how much more confidence do you have in your receivers given some of the plays they've been making compared to a couple months ago? Yeah, I don't know that there's – I had confidence in them then, you know. Um, I had confidence in Jacob then. I think he's gotten a little better touch. He's gotten a little better poise in the pocket. To stand in there, you know, he took a pretty good hit on one of those, and uh, he took he threw the ball as late as he possibly could, but he put some air under it. Put a nice touch on the ball, but then the receivers made the play. Um, we haven't always given our receivers a chance, and the receivers haven't always given the quarterback a chance by winning the the red line, winning the sideline. But both those things happened, and those guys made a couple good plays, which I think you know, as the year goes on, you'd like to improve in that area, especially taking shots with the way people play us. You got to be able to win on those, or you're in second long. And uh, Jacob's done a little better job putting some touch on those balls and giving them a chance to make a play. Coach, uh, can you highlight some areas that you think that you all could possibly give y'all some trouble in what you're sort of looking at in practice this week? Well, if I highlight that, it's giving them information. <laughs> I mean, why would I give them that information? I can tell you what they're good at. Um, they're, they're, they're really good, especially offensively, spreading the ball around. They have a back, um, number 15, that we're going to show our players today, who you know is a potential draft pick, really good player. Talked to several teams that have played against them. Um, you know, Elijah McGuire he does a great job. I mean, he makes people miss now. And he does, you, you don't have to like try to lie about their players to your players. You just turn the tape on. And when you turn the tape on, they have a really big offensive line, really big offensive line. And they've got some good skilled wide outs. They got a quarterback who's played in the SEC. They got another quarterback they played last week who takes off running and scrambles around. Really good athlete. You know, and defensively they got a couple transfers um, from the SEC. They're good players too, and they're big up front. And I know who their coach is, so I know uh, I know how they'll play. He's a really good coach. He's a really good special teams coach, um, and always did that well at uh, Mississippi State, and North Alabama. So all you gotta do is turn the tape on, and, and you'll be able to show our players that these guys got players too. Kirby on, on Jacob Beeson, I know he still has some close calls on balls that don't get picked that could, but overall, is it still surprising that he's avoided the interception as much as he had this, <laughs> this year? I, I don't know if the right word is surprising. I mean, I, he has done a good job of that. I mean, I think when you talk to Jill about it, you talk to people that have a lot of experience working with quarterbacks, some quarterbacks are good at not doing that, you know, and I think. He has been lucky some. He's also been unlucky some. I mean, I think back to the South Carolina when they got tipped straight up in the air. You know, so some of that you're going to give or take some more breaks. But he hadn't had a whole lot of ball handlers. He had a couple Saturdays that he went the wrong spot. <coughs> um, but I think some of that is instincts and, and just natural seeing things come open. Because even there's times early in the year where he didn't look at the right spot, but he threw them open. You know, so I think his accuracy helps with preventing the other mistakes. If you're accurate, even if you throw it the wrong place, you can throw it to our guy and not their guy. Uh, but I hope he continues to grow in that department. Coach, after the uh, Nichols game, you had talked about how in the week leading up to that game, how you weren't happy you know, with preparation. It felt like some of the guys hadn't given their all. And 
You talked about how that game needed to be a learning experience going forward. How much do you and the coaches have kind of harp on how important that preparation is, you know, and how that game went? Well, I think preparation for every game is the same. You, you don't have games that you don't prepare for the same. And I think their approach is reflected by how you approach it as a coach. So I've been sure, you know, everybody in the organization, from our coaches all the way down, that they'll approach the game the same way you will. And uh, if your attitude and demeanor is the same and approach is the same and, and studies and everything you do is the same, then so will the kids. And we've got to make sure they understand that because I know the athletes that go to the school. I, I, so I recruited some of these guys. I also coached in the state of Louisiana. And I know the kind of athletes they have there. So when you turn the tape on, you see them making plays. And you see them beat a, a Georgia Southern team that's very talented that came up here and played last year. It's easy to sell your kids. This is a good team. Kirby, you mentioned the experience they have at quarterback. Uh, your impressions of uh, Jennings from facing him before and maybe how he's developed since then? He's improved as a passer. He's gotten better. He's gotten more comfortable with uh, touch passes. Um, he's a good athlete, but it's not like he wants to go out and take off running all the time. He's a, he's a guy that throws the ball in the pocket. He did that in high school here in the state of Georgia. Um, he's very talented. He makes good decisions with the ball. Um, and he's improved as a passer more than anything. I mean, obviously, the system he's playing in now is a little different than LSU's was. So they allow him to do a little more. Curry, when it comes to your young defensive line, what's the biggest area you think those guys have improved as the years go along? Knowing what to do. I mean, I mean, when you get enough reps of our defense, you don't change defenses every week. The carryover effect, the cumulative effect of a season, I think has allowed them to improve. I think they've gotten a little stronger, um, but they're really more confident in knowing when I hear that call, I see that signal. I know what to do instead of thinking, do I go left or do I go right? They're thinking I go north and I go, you know, go knock somebody back. So that's helped them improve and, and they've had to play. I mean, the number one get, way to get better a lot of times is to play. And they certainly have had to play a lot. What's made them tough against the run? The Z line? Uh, ULL, yes. Oh, ULL. I got you. Well, the biggest thing against the run for them is the guys up front. You know, they've got a group of core guys up front. If they stop the run, they strike you up front. Got good bodies, good size. They got a linebacker that transferred from Arkansas, who's a good player. I mean, they tackle well. You know, I think when you look across the Sun Belt Conference and you watch their conference, because as you watch them, you see the other teams in the conference, you realize it's it's a space league. It's a league where you better be able to tackle in space. And uh, they've done that. Coach, why has the offense struggled in the rest of the season? I think a lot of things. You know, I think that uh, we've got some turnovers that have really proved costly. It's hard to pinpoint one thing. Ultimately, when you get in the red area, you've, you've either got to have a dominant force on the outside that requires double coverage that can win matchups, or you've got to be able to overpower people and run the ball. And both those areas, we've struggled in some, and uh, we've had some costly turnovers down there. The main reason we've struggled. Florida and LSU will be playing again this weekend. That version of the game, of course, was supposed to be. That's kind of been addressed already. They talked about it the week that, that they didn't play and all the controversy in that and then rescheduling it. I mean, I think that that's discussion between the conference commissioner and the, the LSU and the Florida University representation, but not, not for me to be concerned with at all. I was uh, actually going to ask about the D-line a while ago, but uh, what what were uh, some of the tangible? You had a big recruiting weekend, uh, a lot of guys there this past weekend. Were you able to see some tangible effects of just kind of uh, the, the whole environment that you had Saturday night and that win and that atmosphere? I can't say any tangible effects. I mean, I certainly felt there was good energy in the building, good energy after the game, whether it be in the locker room for those guys and over here, that was certainly positive. But say there's any tangible, or I can't say that, it wasn't like there was any commitments that came from it. So that's what you'd like to have tangible. Kirby Royce uh, has competed for this starting quarterback job uh, you know, several occasions here. Um, you know, in this day and age, to have a guy stick it out when you don't want a job and have him around to be your honor when you need him. And what does it say about him and what kind of person is he? Bryce? Yeah. Oh, Bryce is a great kid. He's a competitor. He wants to go out and win. He fought really hard for that position. And, 
he'll continue to do so. He enjoys the punting. He finds his relevance right now in that, and uh, that's important to Bryce. And uh, Bryce is a bulldog. And there's a lot of people that have come here and played. And some have played more than others. A lot of them are my friends. And some played a lot, some didn't, but they're all Bulldogs. And Bryce Rams is a Bulldog, and I appreciate him for that. Kirby, kind of a first-year coaching question. When you're 11 games in, and I know you peeled back on some of the contact work in, in practice, do you find yourself, when you're looking to play your best game of the season, are, are you doing more implementing and teaching, or is it now more about kind of tweaking and refining when you're this deep into a year? I think the, the physicality part, you ask any coach in America, there's a certain level of you've got to be able to, because you're managing injuries at this point too, so you've got less numbers. Um, but as far as what we do weekly, that doesn't change a whole lot. Um, as far as implementing what we're doing, that depends on who we're playing. You know, some weeks require a lot more implementing than others because you're playing a completely different offense or a completely different defense. But a lot of weeks, it's very similar to what you're implementing. And I think the more carryover you have, the easier it is on your kids. But some weeks we face an exotic punt return team or an exotic uh, kickoff return team or kickoff. It's not all the same. So each week has its kind of history of life of its own. I uh, don't believe anybody's asked about Matrez Patrick. How close was he to going on Saturday and could we see him return this week? We hope to see him return. I mean, it wasn't a matter of close. He, he wasn't clear, so he couldn't uh, medically go. I think he's getting better. He's healing. He's had some, uh, a couple burners, and um, that's an injury that you don't want to mess with. So we're going to make sure he's healthy before we get him back. And uh, Ron Corson, the medical staff, and doctors will make that decision. Uh, Kirby, it seems like a lot of games this year have come down to the last drive or last few minutes. So what do you guys do to prepare them for these high pressure situations? Well, we practice them a lot. You know, uh, I've, I've kind of grown up in a coaching tree where every day practice ends on a situation that you win or lose the game. Obviously, everybody would assume that's two minutes, but for us, that's not necessarily the case. Sometimes it's what we call four minute, where we have to get the ball back, which came up in the Tennessee game. Um, it's come up several times this year. It came up in the Missouri game. So you try to simulate things that happen for your offense and your defense, and you want the kids walking off the field feeling like I did what I had to do or I didn't, so that they feel that feeling of uh, I got to do better next time, I lost, or I conquered it, I did well. But we do it every Monday, we do it every Thursday, and we go over as coaches after it because that's the part that you don't get enough practice on. So we analyze it and say, what could we have done different in that situation so we're better prepared in the game. I don't know if you've confirmed this or not, but would will you guys be wearing black jerseys against Louisiana Lafayette? Yeah, we haven't confirmed that yet. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Y'all utilized the toss sweep more in it this week. I know you talked about it was because of a lot of Auburn's athletic front. With the success of that, do y'all think that's something that you'll try to implement more moving forward, or that was just more of a, a key matchup that you saw? That's always in our game plan. I mean, it's, it's not been in our game, not been in our game plan any game. You know, it's, there are different ways of running the toss. There are different people to give it to. There's different blocking schemes off of it of how you block their front. That will always be part of pretty much everybody's game plan, but definitely ours with our backs. Um, so we hope we keep it in any part, but it a little bit depends on how they're playing it, whether it works or not. I was just wondering, uh, other, two other injuries, Jason Stanley, Daquan Hawkins, Michael, and we hope to get uh, Daquan back this week. Um, he's been coming back, been rehabbing, getting better and better. Hope to get him back this week. Jason Stanley probably will not be back this week with his uh, foot injury. Coach, it looks like, uh, looks like in the second half, your defense was put together in a complete game, mm -hmm. uh, you know, not getting up a you know, first down in the entire second half. What would a uh, complete game offensively, uh, what would you want to see Yeah, I mean, it, I don't know that you ever a complete game. I think we can play perfect game. It's never existed. There's always things you can work on, get better at. Um, I think, you know, I don't even think we played a complete game on defense the second half because a lot of things we did wrong. They just dropped the ball. So I mean, they got a wheel route open down the sideline. So it wasn't like we did it all right. They they helped us. All right. So everybody recognized that they gave up a they gave up a first down, but some of that wasn't what we did. Some of that was what they did. So I think offensively, number one, to play a complete game, they may have to mess up once or twice, all right? 
But for us to play one, it's be execute. It's not jump off sides. It's not snap the ball low and have it shoot past. It's not take a sack when you're in the red area. It's not self-inflicted wounds that we can control. And I think that's probably the most important thing to play a complete game offensively would be just the execution being the right way and hitting on all cylinders. Coach, again, going back to the Nichols game, you talked about making it a learning experience. How much do you feel like that has come up through the season and, and just keeping everybody on track through the season? It hadn't come up a whole lot, I'll be honest with you, because we're focused on the team we play. And uh, I think any time you get ready to play an opponent, you need to focus on that opponent, not on the past opponent. Can you learn from mistakes? Every week we learn from mistakes. Every week we learn from things that happened, but not necessarily who the opponent was, it's things that happened in that game. You're talking about some of the default throws earlier. Has your opinion of the wide receivers, or how has that evolved in terms of their ability to, to be kind of uh, playmakers on the outside? I don't know that one game changes that, I'll be honest with you. I mean, has the season progressed? Yes, the season progressed. I don't think that, I think that our wideouts are improving. I think that every position on our team needs to improve. I think that uh, some of the younger players or newer players have figured out how things are called, how they're signaled, how I'm working, how I'm doing, so they're able to play more often. Therefore, we got some guys that got a chance to make some plays outside out there more often. And uh, the better those guys learn, the more confident they get, the less they make mistakes on who to block, where to go to, when we check, where do I go, what do I have on this play, the better, more we can play those guys. And uh, Javon has grown in that role, Riley has grown in that role, so those guys continue to grow so therefore, they're getting some opportunities at some shots. You're gonna want to knock on wood on this one too. Um, I'm I'm looking at injury reports for Florida, Tennessee, for some other teams. Compared compared to them, y'all, I think Marshall's the only season-ending one. Is there a direct line from Scott Sinclair and his staff, Ron Corson and his staff, to to that for you all, or or is it just luck? You know, I don't know the answer to that question. I certainly would like to give credit to Scott Sinclair and his staff. And I've always had respect for both Scott and the entire weight staff here because of the way they did things at places that I saw them. You know, with Central Florida, I always took the call Central Florida and Coach O'Leary teams were big, physical, strong, tough. And I was hoping to get that same thing. Ron Corson's always done a great job medically. I also think that has something to do with how you practice. But I actually think we practice physical. So um, I think that's key in your strength and condition. I also think some of that is how you recruit, the size of players you recruit. I mean, the bigger the guys, historically, the less they've gotten hurt. The smaller the guys, they get dinged a lot more. Um, but you're right. When you look at the injury reports and some of the issues from the other teams in the SEC are having, we have been very, uh, very fortunate. I would say up until last week, I thought last week with two starters out with Daquan and uh, they Trez, that, that was – uh, that hurt, but at the same time, it's going to happen. It's inevitable. I think luck plays a part, but certainly think that managing your practice schedule and also having a great strict staff in season, not just what they do out of season, but what we're doing in season is uh, helping with that too. Coach, can you provide a, somewhat of a progress report for some of these O-linemen that have uh, been redshirted this year? You know, obviously we don't get a chance to see them much, but I'm, I know they're practicing every week. Trying to get better. Yeah, I'd love to tell you that they're all going to be stars and they're all going to be awesome players and they're going to save the day next year when these seniors <laughs> that y'all hate so much leave. That uh, I like that I think the kids play as hard as they can. They got a lot of experience. Um, uh, but you know, Ben is working hard. Ben Cleveland's working really hard, and he's showing improvement. Uh, I get to see him uh, a lot of days, and we're actually taking time on a couple days a week. We're calling an opportunity period, and we're letting those guys go play against each other. So they don't do scout work, they do our work. Because um, we have not had a lot of opportunities in games with situations like that, like y'all are aware of. So we, we've got to play them in our practices and make sure they get work. So we take a chance, we take an opportunity to do that. Oh, Solomon's done that. Solomon, Solomon's shown improvement as well. Chris Barnes is another guy that's pulled well and he's shown promise um, to do some good things. Those guys are gonna have to grow up. They're gonna have to grow up the rest of this season. They're gonna have to grow up in the offseason. You know, and we're gonna have to bring more in to help in that area because we're losing some good players 
in those areas. So I, I, I continue to say the development of your team comes by who they get coached by every day. So they're getting coached in the individual by their O-line coach, but they also get coached when they're over on our field by a graduate assistant who was an O-line coach last year at a, a FBS school. So, Last question. Maurice was just named SEC Defensive Player of the Week. You mentioned his maturity on Saturday. What has materialized in that area for him that you've seen coming from Tuscaloosa this year? Maturity-wise, nothing. He's mature over there. I mean, I've known the kid for so long. He, he, he matured while he was there, most certainly. But the last year that I was with him there, he was a very mature kid, very uh, well-spoken, knows what to say, the right time to say it. And uh, coming over here, it's been the same way. I mean, he's very mature. He's I thought that he might be a little more apprehensive around people that he didn't know to speak out and say his piece and, and encourage and show leadership, but he has not been, and I've been very thankful for that. And the way he has played has allowed him to have a voice because you respect the way people practice and play, so he's earned the respect of the team by what he's done.